Neil Hay, Market Development Manager with Avery Dennison. You're here at World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. You're talking about what Avery Dennison is doing with blockchain technology. Welcome to Blockchain Journal to have this interview. Thanks for coming. Thank you. So, Neil, uh, you guys, Avery Dennison is a big company. How big is Avery Dennison? Uh, multinational, we're about an $8 billion uh, business, Fortune 500, so relatively sizable. No small potatoes there. No. <laughs> and uh, for a Fortune 500 company, you guys are actually doing some work with blockchain, is that right? Absolutely. So we're taking uh, the, the traceability of supply chains, we're understanding what products, what comprises of that product, and then as it moves through that that supply chain, we're giving that immutability, that confidence to the consumer that what I say my product is, it is really made of that, and the impacts it has made potentially to the environment through CO2, the ability to decarbonize and have that, that auditability, that, that traceability and that, that transparency, which is then linked to a blockchain that we can have the confidence to say what we have said is happening has really happened. So your interest in public distributed ledger technology, which is sort of code for blockchain, is in many ways not only the transparency around what you say is in a product, but also it has to do with how others perceive that product, like that, that, that a customer has confidence that whatever the manufacturer of that product is saying about the product is true. Got it in one. Uh, we don't have to search too hard uh, to see examples perhaps of companies that maybe they thought what was happening um, upstream in their supply chain was true. Uh, maybe the things that they have reported they wholly believed. But the ability to have that auditable traceability piece to then convey the confidence to the customer, you've got it in one, is what the interest in the blockchain is for us. So, so help me out here. Let's say uh, I buy a pair of sneakers, yep. and I, I'm a customer, and I want to know that the leather came from some place, and the rubber came from another place, and the shoelaces were made in a, some sustainable fashion. All of that information is somehow collected and put on chain by Avery Dennison? The first point, uh, that I want to go back a step, if I may, sure. and, and it's that association of the physical item and, and a digital trigger. So the ability, first of all, to say that yes, the leather from that tannery is now equal to either some type, uh, typically an EPC, so an, an electronic product code, which sits in the Atma IO connected product cloud. So I'm one sorry, Atma IO connected product cloud, is that something that Avery Dennison provides? Correct. So maybe I have to go back a step further. Avery Dennison is the business for whom I work, but within that, the business unit at Ma.io, which is the software as a service, the connected product cloud, which I've just mentioned, is where we track and we trace and we capture all of these events as the product moves through the supply chain. So, so the, there's the manufacturing stage for a product, which for a lot of products means a lot of things coming together in, into the final physical item. And then that physical item has to, uh, uh, has to um, basically be transported hand-to-hand -hand through different uh, members of some supply chain before it gets to the retailer and then finally ends up in the customer's hands. Is the data that you're putting in the, this Atma IO connected cloud, is that available to everybody throughout that chain? Is that, is that the business model here? Yes. So, as we collect uh, all, all of that information uh, in, in, a, in a GS1 uh, compliant language, so I have been made, I have been shipped, I have been received, all, all, of, all of these things, all of these events sit in the connected product cloud. Uh, as the sneaker manufacturer, using your example, I have access to all of that information. What we then can do quite uniquely is by giving a consumer-led digital trigger, which is typically NFC or QR, I have the ability then to tap or to scan that trigger, and then based on the story which I need to tell as my brand, I can convey that information based on the carbon impact, for instance, of this product, and then crucially what we are doing as a business to decarbonize 
that piece, that, that product or that supply chain. So are you doing this on behalf of other uh, consumer goods companies like sneaker manufacturers or any other consumer good? There are a host of companies that use our traceability software, yes. And is this important to, is this rising in importance to customers or customers demanding more of the companies that they buy their products from and in the way of sustainability and accountability for the origin of the, the materials that went into the product? Is that something that's important? Personally, I think that we are in a, towards the end of a paradigm shift where the need, the drive for fast fashion and cheap apparel is pretty much ended and, the, and the, the need now to have products which you have confidence in, which you are proud to wear and that you know is going to last is here and that it has a story. And that, that's one of the key messages that, that when I talk about Atma IO is the ability to tell this story um, in a very auditable way, that confidence that when you put that piece of apparel on your body, on your feet, that you know where it's come from. Not just a dye house or a tannery in this country, this dye house in that country, not that slightly across the border that have slightly different human rights uh, laws, but the conference say it's here. We start right from the source, right through, as you said, to the consumer, and then empower that brand owner to tell that story, and then, we can then have that sat on a blockchain so that there is almost no question as to how that story has built up. And what brands are you working with or can you say? I will not say on uh, that, the, the specifics. Can, can you comment on how big these brands are? Are they world known, like really well known brands? I, I'm happy to say um, that very large, um, sneaker, uh, apparel um, providers are partners with Avery Dennison. I mean, you're an $8 billion company, so you must be working with some big customers. With some big customers, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, Neil, hey, uh, incredible story there. Thanks very much for telling it. And thanks for meeting with us here at World Economic Forum. Pleasure, thank you.